All right, it's uh, now my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Jim Benson, President Emeritus of Business, uh, business Bemidji State University. And, uh, and I've had the opportunity to work with Jim on a couple of other occasions, and uh, I understand uh, what he has led uh, in Bemidji. And it started a few years ago, but uh, he's still into it. He told me today that he was at a, a Bemidji Leeds meeting this morning, and I think, would you say, it started eight or ten years ago. So, I mean, this is the real deal. And uh, the provost uh, stepped up, the president of the college, and said to the community, we're going to make this happen. And guess what? There's been a lot of good things happening there. So, it's my pleasure, Jim, to introduce you. Well, thank you and good evening. I'm going to take you through a presentation that's really going to be fast. Uh, we're going to load a lot of information on you, but we're going to be taking a look, basically, at this call for action that you have here tonight. It's an extremely important thing. Ten years ago, we did this in Bemidji, and we had a group, uh, maybe more than this, but they were in a much more packed environment, and we could hardly get them in the room. And I looked at our meeting this morning that we had in Bemidji Leeds, and I thought, wow, have we come a long, long way. We take a look at this idea of why. Why do children ask why? Because they want to know something. But why do adults never ask why? It's because they think they know everything. And uh, we need to take a look at that as we light the candle and look to the future. We need to be asking more questions and not assuming we know what the answers are. Because let me tell you, the world is really different and it's a really exciting time. I want to lay out a little a frame of timeline for you. My grandfather Benson was a uh, homesteader over by Erskine, Minnesota. In the 1800s, he got himself 160 acres of solid white oak timber, and he had to build a cabin on there with one door, one window of certain dimensions. He had to live there five years in a row for at least six months, and then he had the proof of claim. He raised a dozen kids, and. Uh, but this homesteader, you know, he produced my dad. My dad had a rheumatic heart, so they didn't think he could be a farmer. So when he got out of high school, they sent him to St. Olaf. And then he got a phone call to come home and save the farm because they had a big problem. Now, this was a big farm, 600 acres farmed by horses. It was huge. And uh, it was a pretty exciting time. But my dad, I believe, was a real transformer. And then along came me. Then I have, a, uh, I have five kids, but one of my sons, Tom, he's a principal in Amory, Wisconsin, and he's a real mover and shaker. He's involved in everything that's going on, and the oldest grandson just got married. Grandson Andy is a digital game designer, software engineer. Take a look at the spectrum here. Uh, from me and the reality point, I sat on Grandpa Benson's knee when he was in his 80s. I was like five or six. And he told about pioneer stories. You know, it was amazing as you look over here. He lived in a muscle power world. He, he cut those trees down with axe and saw and fire and horses. Grandfather Benson's time was closer akin to the time of the pharaohs. Stop to think about that. And I sat on this knee. That's not very long ago. And then I look over here to the other end. Andy lives in the virtual world. I mean, this is one set of five generations of an immense change. And we can't solve the problems in International Falls, Scutcheson County, Bemidji, or wherever we're going to do it by looking at what Grandfather Benson had to do. We need to be looking ahead. And that's going to be my main focus here tonight as we take a look at that. The birds in the air are fed there, but we don't, they're, it isn't dropped in nets. The old bird has to go out and get this stuff. And uh, in order to do that, there's lots out there, but he has to recognize it and, and eat it. And then uh, if he has a family or she has a family, got to bring it back and feed those kids. But the th key thing here to realize is that even if your little bird sitting in that nest, you know, the one that chirped with the biggest mouth and the largest chirp, they're the one that gets fed the most. And so when we stop to take a look at that, we realize that we got to get going, get noticed, and get her done. In other words, don't wait for somebody else to solve your problem. We
we got to get out there and do it. And this can be done because it's being done all over the world. And we are competing with the rest of the world. We look at the strangle of vision here. You know, you can get all hung up and you don't know where you're going. But Warren Buffett says, I try to buy stock in companies so wonderful that an idiot can run them because sooner or later one will. And so we need to take a look at our communities have to be so dynamic that they're just cruising and we are on for a ride of a time of a lifetime as you take a look at this sort of thing. So as you take a look at the future, of, wow, this doesn't show up very well. <laughs> It shows up white. I sent them a black one. I don't know what he did with it. <laughs> but we're going to take a quick look at Bemidji Leeds and what we did. In about the year 2004, a bunch of us got together and said, this community has a lot of assets, but it doesn't know where it's going, and we need to put some focus on this community. So we went out there to build a future of promise for Bemidji. And uh, how do you make that future your friend? rather than a, a competitive thing that gets you all such stuff that you don't know what you're doing. Because you either claim your destiny or it'll claim you. In other words, what, what we're talking about here, decide where you want to go and go do it. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you what it's going to be like, because that's why you're going to get a short stick if you do that. you got to go out and make the things happen and realize what's happening there. And so we need to take a little lesson from John Kennedy. John Kennedy says, I have an idea. And that idea is that we're going to put a person on the moon and bring them back by the end of the decade. And so if you get the idea, what did NASA do? They set the goal and they planned from the goal, not to the goal. You set the goal in your plan towards yourself. And it's unbelievable what happened because we pulled this thing off in eight and a half years. Can you imagine eight and a half years getting to the moon and back, having to invent the materials, the processes, the systems, everything had to be redone. And it's amazing that we did this. But if he had said instead, I'm going to Congress to get some funding for a lunar program, we'd have found a thousand ways to run that in a ditch. You know? But it was a goal that we could plan from the future and we pulled it off. All things can be done like that, whether they are communities, and business, education, industry, all these aspects here need to be worked from the future because as you identify that future, you plan from it. And let me, that's the one thing I want to emphasize tonight is look to the future. Don't worry about the past. You can't change that. That is an experience but the future is providing the opportunities of where we're going to be taking this community. You know, where's Babe? We haven't seen her around much lately at all. And so one of the things that we decided in Bemidji was to reforest the city and to plant 10,000 trees a year for 10 years, and we did it. Because we didn't want to be looked like strip mall America. It's still that way. You know, there are communities that got ahead of this and did it real early on and they even controlled their signage and everything else. You'd think you were in a state park when you're in some of these communities. And so things can happen here. Here is a key, the future. Every minute there are more than 17 new breakthroughs offered up throughout the world. Every minute. 17 major breakthroughs. That's 25,000 new things every day. Can you imagine living in a world with 25,000 new things every day? That's an incredible opportunity. What are we going to be doing about it? Do I sit around and wonder and grump? No, let's grab a few of those things and make them happen. Because, you know, every year there's enough new knowledge to develop to fill the Library of Congress 80 million times. Wow. This is the world that we have right here. Tomorrow's solutions are being presented to all of us. I'm going to give you a couple little hints. I could talk all day on all the new stuff that's going along, but uh, we don't have time for that tonight because we're going to be taking a look at what do you do with communities in this kind of opportunity. But there's never, ever, ever been a better time to reinvent the community than right now. And the opportunity is there for us to be working with this. We called for excellence and we held our meeting. We did it in the uh, Indian Center. And we looked at this idea of stewards because you're going to be, uh, become parts of stewards of this community. Because if you look at their, their leaders who cross boundaries, take an integrated approach, build conditions for action, they have 360 degree vision. 
Recognize the interdependence between the economy, the environment, the social equity. Stewards operate at the center of tough issues, not at the edges. They are risk takers, they are passionate and energetic, and they are people of vision. Thank you for coming tonight because they're describing you. And this is an opportunity to put this thing to work. So as you look at this community fact finding, here's what we did. When we, after we had this meeting, we decided we better go out there and find out what the community is thinking about. And so we used uh, Jim Collins' uh, model of good to great. And one of the things we went out and asked the community was, what are we, you know, the best at in Bemidji? And those really are your assets. And so as we look at these sort of things, something isn't showing up there. We also looked at what are we passionate about, and we looked at what will bring us prosperity. These three windows we looked through in our conversations, and we didn't do a casual thing. We held 130 listening sessions over eight months. We went out and dug it out of the community, and people came and said, we want to do this, we want to do this, how about this? And then we took our stewards, we had 24 stewards into a day and a half strategic planning session, and we teased out of that, well, Collins has something called Big Hairy Audacious Goals, bee haunts. We didn't think the community of Bemidji would like bee haunts. They'd stick their tongue in their cheek and say, what are those crazy people doing now? So we called them our destiny drivers. And so we rolled them out there based on this destiny. It says, our shared destiny in Bemidji is to do this. Through intentional collective action, Bemidji will be a healthy community successfully balancing our regional center amenities with small town beauty and culture. We like what we are, but we want to be a world-class player in this environment as well. We want to be a vibrant uh, economic center recognized for innovation, creativity, and knowledge. We want to be a social, cultural, recreational, educational magnet. We want to be an embracing, culturally diverse community. We want to be people committed to shared prosperity, long-term community stewardship, and a start of North and a national model for community success. We were feeling a little brushed, you know, when we had all these people working on it. And they said, just don't be good, be the best. So we went after the best. And we rolled out then, pursuing this destiny. As I mentioned, we didn't call them big hairy uh, bee hogs. We called them our destiny drivers. And every Sunday, on the front page of the Bemidji Pioneer, Dennis Doden, our publisher, rolled out a destiny driver with stories and ideas and, and what the community was thinking about here. And that story rolled out as the feature article on the front page of the Bemidji Pioneer for 17 consecutive Sundays. People would call us and say, is such and such going to be included? Wait and see. You know, can we have this? Wait and see. And when all 17 of them rolled out there, there were things like a declaration of interdependence, meaning working together. And so reforest the city, planting the 10,000 trees, uh, a top 100 hospital in the nation, we revitalize our downtown, develop our South Shore, parks and trails, jobs, five knowledge economies, the event center. Uh, I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Can you see? Oh, Bemidji gave the capital. <laughs> uh, get off to the side here, you don't show up very well. We spent 70 million bucks on the airport. Any plane in the world can land in our airport right now. <laughs> it's a really exciting thing. And including a new, you know, uh, what's the thing you walk on when you come out of a plane and go in? Huh? Tarmac. Tarmac, yeah. I used to go into Green Bay and he'd get out of the plane and walk on the ground and say, this is an NFL city. <laughs> you know, it makes a world of difference. Those little things that you don't think about. And now you come, you fly into Bemidji and you walk in and they enclose tarmac into the thing. People say, wow, this is neat. And so you start taking a look at top five high school, lowest incidence of alcohol and drug abuse, uh, centers of excellence, a four lane highway from the Twin Cities, not to the Twin Cities. We want to open it up so people to come to us. It was done intentionally to focus on ourselves and not focus on the Twin Cities. Play, clean Lake, Bemidji, and the best technology ever. In 1994, when I came to Bemidji, 
Paul Bunyan Communications rolled out the, the, the uh, internet and stuff like that. The two most wired cities in the United States in 1994 were Phoenix and Bemidji. In the nation! Last Thursday morning, one week ago, they announced something. In fact, it was in the Star Tribune again. It's been in the Star Tribune five days in a row. They can't believe because we had a gigazone announcement which says we're going to be offering a pipe that's as big as any in the nation in Bemidji, and it rolls right on up here, very close to you. 5,000 square miles of fiber optics. Unbelievable. They're selling right now 10 megabytes in, in the Twin Cities in some sectors. This is 1,000. And you can drop a, instead of spending an hour downloading a movie, you can do it in one second. It's going to change everything. And so in one week, we're really exciting, and people are calling us and looking at us. Who knows where these things go? We thought it was pretty good 10 years ago. It's nothing like it is today. Day at the Capitol, we all go down there in two busloads with our guests. This is the best day the Capitol has. People call and say, wow, look at this. All this stuff going on. Make sure you stop in and see me. Well, I've walked the legislative hall for my whole life, and let me tell you, they're kind of happy when you leave, but now it's the opposite. And uh, we have an effective community-wide program when we head down there. We were honored in the 2008 recipient of National Excellence Award from the Chamber of Commerce. The best in the nation. We made it. We also won another one, best in the nation, from the uh, National Association of Development Organizations. And so it took us a very short time of four years, and we had these things nailed. And it was pretty exciting. So now we're on to something else. But you start to see this thing. You know, the successful communities are built and not born. This wasn't there. We went out and did it and made it happen. And so we put together the program planning from the future to do this sort of thing. We're running it now in 16 communities and one more here is starting out. This is pretty exciting across the state and lots of other non-state ones have come and gotten help as well. We're rolled out the Bemidji Leeds 2.0 because the, we started getting all kinds of new stuff to do. And so we have five big categories of knowledge that we're working on. And we figure anything can fit into those five, the quality of the community, the quality of life, economics, and so forth. And these are all defined. I don't have time to stop and take you much time to do it. But these destiny drivers, one of them that we met on this morning is something called Students First. And it's a program of, of secondary students that will have a plan of what the future is going to be like. How do I get ready for it? What is my plan? And a personal coach from the community assigned to me one-on-one -on -one to work with it. Wow, executive out of 3M said, Jim, imagine that experience. That's unbelievable. And I'm not talking about the kids. You old duffers are going to learn something from them. And it's true. It just creates a whole different way of thinking on this sort of thing. We have something called the Minnesota Innovation Institute that's going off the chart. It's unbelievable what's happening there. We just bought a brand new uh, venture, it's an older building, to build an incubator accelerator to start up new companies. And uh, we haven't even remodeled it to move into and it's absolutely committed full. 50 engineers on the top floor are coming in that do engineering for John Deere, Ash, Caterpillar, Articat, you name it, all over the United States. And then on the first floor, this uh, EXP software solution, say Space Age software, I think. We don't have any more room, so we're looking down on the lower level. We don't call it the basement. And we're looking for ways that we can leverage that sort of thing. Also in that is a training program, and we're going to take one fourth of a square footage out of Northwest Technical College and create a training program because all major corporations are moving into automation, big time. And there's nobody who knows how to run that. And these people are going to go through a 400-hour program, and they're worth 85 grand a piece when they leave that program. And we've trained 200 already in that thing from all over. They're coming through that. It's amazing what happened. 
this wasn't even on our chart, you know, two years ago, and now it's going to become a big time player for us. Angel funds for money and so forth. We're looking for the next big thing. You know, you never know because all of these are our partners. Everybody's participating in, in getting this thing done. It is an amazing time in Bemidji right now. So, as so we look at this, choices, choices, too many choices. Multiplying five bowls of bread to feed a thousand people is impressive, but I can't eat gluten. <laughs> yeah, I suppose they couldn't eat lutefisk either, you know. But, uh, <laughs> We look at organizational alternatives. Most people are recognized this baby, which is a top-down organization, where the whole idea is about control. But when you run an organization like in this here community like this, it really has to be a servant leadership model because you're looking for ideas. You're looking for new ways of inventing yourself as you're doing this sort of thing. And so basically, you're still responsible, but you gotta turn you know, the, uh, uh, the authority thing loose to a lot of people. We're controlling very little in our community <laughs> because you can't. Instead of five or 10 or 20 people thinking smart, we got six, 800 people thinking smart, coming at us with ideas and things like this and help making this happen. So as you look at that thing called action, you know, there's one that's called uh, top-down administration, and there's a servant leader here, and then there's this, what I call maybe horizontal management, but basically, you gotta keep looking at that yellow thing that you're working with, that's your community, that's the thing that's happening there. Don't worry about the organization itself, but organize such that you can make these things happen. Uh, I'm gonna skip through that, it's too hard to read. But you need to take a look at the competitiveness. They're relentless. I mean, they're coming at you all the time and they're, you know, and so forth. And that's the exciting thing about it because you don't look back, somebody may be gaining on you. Satchel Page said that and on the right near mirror. And so you gotta be watching for this sort of thing happening. We need to view personal time as we look at, you know, generations and lifetimes, the weeks, days, and months, hours, minutes, and seconds. And then we split the second into tenths of a second, into hundreds of a second, into thousands of a second. Time, we're really flying here. But as you stop to take a look at this, we realize here, basically, what's happened here? <laughs> Oh, well, we're talking about nanoseconds, billions of a second, trillions of a second, quadrillions of a second, and quintillions of a second. That's really fast. And that basically is the knowledge base of Wavecrest Corporation in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, which makes, builds a jigger analysis for the, the computer industry all over the world. And so when you talk about getting fast, it just, you know, you keep adding three more zeros to it. It's faster, 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 faster! Amazing! You know, so you look at a, uh, and I, at a second, that's the amount of time it takes light to travel across a single cell, and we're measuring that, and doing that kind of thing. Because the horizon is a definite place when you're standing still, but it always recedes and you approach it. It's well to remember and you think they have the future well in hand. And so as we take a look at this future, we all have a mission, that's the intent of the organization, and you deliver that operationally. Then you have your vision, which is the aspiration of what you want to do with it. That's what this meeting here tonight is all about, and how you strategically do that. I want to add a couple other cookies to you. One has to do with the mystique. That's the perception that others have of you. It's very important when you describe what you are doing here tonight and what you're going to be doing in the future to look at that mystique because you notice those two are coming in the other direction because they're setting the table for that mission and you can be working with those sorts of things. The mission is why the organization was created, created in the first place and why it continues to exist. It's the reason for being. You plan to organize control and so forth. Your vision is basically the ultimate status you wish to become. Where do you want to take it? Where do you want to do with it? You know, it, it, it focuses on the pursuit. This is action. And it's the reach and grasp dictate you never quite arrive at this desirable condition. And strategically then, you start thinking differently when you do vision work than when you do mission work. And so, to so take a look at that, the power of vision is a terrible thing to see and have no vision. Helen Keller said that. Or this one says, the vision is not seen as a dream, but a reality that's not come into existence yet. I love that one.
In my head, I know how can I describe it and so forth. And we see where there's no vision, there's no hope. This is not a new idea. In fact, it's a very old idea. Vision is this, where there is no vision, the people will perish. 6,000 year old idea. But we always forget about it. And all of our corporations that have hit the dust, hit the dust because they had no vision. We lost one half the Fortune 500 companies in the decade of the 80s because of a lack of vision. Communities might lose their lack of vision and they become obsolete, pretty soon they drift away. But if they have vision, you can make things happen. The mystique is perception. Perception is reality. How do you want others to perceive of you? It determines the company you wish to be associated and it provides a place where ideas can land and be examined for fit. And that's delivered by the future. And it's really, really exciting. When you stop to think about that, I'll give you an idea in perception. There was a bunch of, in the car rental agencies, there was one of them was called Hertz. And then there were 17 also rents, all kinds of little ones that are trying to make it. One day, Avis ran the numbers and they said, you know something, we're nowhere near Hertz, but we're bigger than the other 16. And so they just disassociated themselves with, this, with the also rants, and they said, we're number two. It was brilliant. In one day, now there are two major ones. And then they took away all the advantage of being number one by saying, we try harder. In the year, I think it was 94, I was reading the paper, and the ad didn't say we try harder anymore. It said we try hard, dot, er. It was the movement into online reservations and all this sort of thing. That little dot jumped off that page and hit me right in the forehead. I knew exactly what they were doing with that dot. And so as we stop to take a look at it, it's important. We have Case IH, which is called the Big Red. Man, that stuff gets bigger every year. 300,000 bucks plus for a tractor and combines and all this sort of thing. This is big business in the ag business. John Deere, the green machine. And they, whether you mow the lawn or do the field, it's big and green. But either Big Red or the green machine run into trouble in the construction industry because Case turns red to yellow. John Deere turns green to yellow. Why is that? Why the change in color? Because Cat owns it anywhere in the world. And if you don't paint it yellow, you can't sell it. Isn't that amazing? The color of the machine that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars won't sell because it's colored the wrong way. That's how powerful Mystique is. It's extremely powerful. And so as we start to see it, we got to realize that as we've trotted on out there. At every crossroad that leads to the path of the future, tradition this takes 10,000 men to guard the past. Yeah, that's true. Nobody wants to change. Or we see the difficult takes a little time, the impossible takes a little longer. I love that one. You know, it's impossible. That only means it's going to take longer. And my favorite CEO, Larry Quadrasi he says, changes are bread and butter, doing it better than everybody else's our job security. Is that neat or what? People get all uncomfortable when you give them something new to do. But rather than get uncomfortable, they ought to be excited as they look at it because it's their job security. We look at our organizational values, cultures, the specific collection of values, norms, commitment, and so forth. And this, this is the way we act in this community. And that will determine our future. And so are we servants or do we wait to be served? Well, I guess we're going to be servants and go out and change the world here. And so as you look at vision and strategy, get this all worked out, culture will eat strategy for breakfast every morning if you have a bad attitude in how this whole thing works out. Because the sum of your values is your strategy is what you're going to do. Your culture influences how you'll do it. And why does culture trump strategy? Because your actions speak louder than your words. Have a positive attitude and things can happen here. Values, culture, attitude. There's little difference in people, but that little difference makes a big difference. Because the little difference is attitude, but the big difference is whether it's positive or negative. Wow! Let's go out there and we have this attitude. And that the, we are in charge of our attitudes. Chuck Swindoll said it the best I've ever seen it. 
He says, the more I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude in life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failure, than successes, than what other people think, say, or do. And that's pretty important. And so he says, it's more important than appearances, giftedness, or skill. It'll make or break a company, a church, or a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude that we'll embrace for the day. We cannot change the past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is to play the one string that we have, and that is our attitude. Because we see, I'm convinced that life is 10% of what happens to me, and 90% of how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. This summer in August, this thing came out, Starbucks. You probably saw it. They looked at it and said, full tuition, tuition for all online ASU degrees. For all their employees, we're gonna give them a degree online. Because there were people who were leaving them to go back to school and stuff like that. So they looked at this and said, they have 135,000 employees, it costs $500 a credit, and it takes 120 credits for an online degree at ASU. We talk about the future. I keep saying, look to the future, plan from the future. It's presenting opportunities for us, because Palmer Lucky, he dreamed about this, and he, it's age 16, he built a little prototype for the simulator business. And then he started a company when he was 21 years old called Oculus VR. And this is a company that's on the verge of releasing Rift, an affordable virtual reality headset for playing ultra-immersive video games. This company is one and a half years old, invented by a 21-year-old person. He just sold it to, you know, to Facebook for $2 billion. That's one of those 25 changes that are happening every day. It's happening all over. Why can't they happen here? We've got to start thinking about making those things happen. Let's so look at this thing called sentience. Those three things, your mission, your vision, and your mystique, you know, that's the ability to sense impressions, feel sensations, convey compelling dreams, be conscious of reality, and engage others to follow our leadership. This is key, keep thinking like this and so forth, because those who build the future are those who know that greater things are yet to come and that they themselves will help bring them about. Their minds are illuminated by the blazing sun of hope. They never have stopped the doubt because they don't have the time. So as we see these sorts of things playing themselves out there, you know, we need to, I don't know what happened to those horses, but it says, let your horses run. And so we need to be doing that sort of thing. And we take a look at the tunnels. They start thinking, man, I'm just starting to see light at the end of the tunnel there, you know. Yeah. And uh, what well, it goes out and orders more tunnel. But when you come to the end, the tunnel may be way different than you first thought. So keep your actions open and so forth. We make history not the other way around the period, so there is no leadership, society stands still. Progress occurs when courageous, skillful leaders seize the opportunity to change things for the better. And so we here in this room are the stepping stones. And we take a look at this, isn't it strange that princes and kings and clowns and paper and sawdust rings and common people like you and me are built this for eternity. Each is given a bag of tools, a shapeless mass, a book of rules, and each must make our lifeless flown a stumbling block or a stepping stone. Thank you, good luck. We wish you the best. <laughs>